Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to make his closing remarks, we have the honor of inviting to the podium the Speaker of the Israeli Knesset, Yuli Yoel Edelstein. Good afternoon, Mr. President of the Czech Republic, Mr. President of Bulgaria. I'm facing a positive problem here. We have so many distinguished guests in this audience that I can't mention them all. So with your kind permission, I'll just mention those who made this event, this very important event possible. And I mean the President of the Czech Republic, both speakers, my colleagues, the Speaker of the Senate and the Chamber of Commerce, the Foreign Minister of the Czech Republic present here, and the President of the European Parliament and my dear friend, Dr. Moshe Kantor in the European Jewish Congress. The rest goes to the leaders of the European Union, to my fellow speakers, heads of delegations, and all the distinguished guests here. Thank you all for being here. I would dare say that it's easier to be Jewish at events like that. I was mentioning to my colleague, the President of the European Parliament, that each year I'm amazed in you by the ability of people and leaders to stand up and confront the issue of the Holocaust, not from the Jewish perspective, but from their personal perspective. With brutal honesty, I'll tell you that I don't know how, how I would have behaved in the reverse situation. Whether I wouldn't try to sweep the issue under the table or to say, sorry, I'm a different generation, I have nothing to do with that. You talk about history, I have nothing to do with that. So I think this is really an ability of prominent leaders to stand up and say, yes, we still have something to do with that and we are going to confront that. There is a very common Jewish tradition to start any event or any speech with addressing in Hebrew, we call it the Achsania, the place that is hosting us. And I think it's very proper to say two words about the place that is hosting us. Because I don't think that it's mere coincidence that uh, we are here in Prague, in the Czech Republic. It's not just someone spoke to someone and they, they were, they just happened to be around and uh, we decided to have this event here. I think that if we are looking for an optimistic message. The example of the Czech Republic shows that with persistent effort of combating anti-Semitism and all the other forms of hatred, and without jumping head forward when an opportunity presents itself to denounce the state of Israel or to join this or that anti-Israel resolution, you can reach the results and you can bring the reality to the streets of Prague that Jew Jews shouldn't be warned not to wear a kippur or not to have any Jewish signs on themselves when they walk around the streets. Sounds very obvious, but unfortunately that's not the case in many other places on this continent or anywhere else. President Zeman, when you addressed us last night, you said that you will just make some remarks and the radical speech in your words you will deliver today. So I was actually full of expectations. And when you were finishing, I said to myself, oh, here is a president that knows how to keep his promise. And then I felt I was turning red. What was so radical about the messages? Is it radical in the modern world to say that we are weak when we are comb combating evil? Is it radical to say that we shouldn't appease terrorists but rather fight them? Yeah, I guess in the modern world these messages sound radical. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm normal. And I think that these messages are normal. And I promise not to deliver a radical speech. I'll just share a couple of thoughts with you, with my colleagues present here and the others. And if something sounds politically incorrect or bitter, you'll have to bear with me. I'm a son of Holocaust survivors, so I get a little bit emotional 
at events like that. We just adopted a resolution here. Heads of parliaments, presidents, speakers, chairmen of different parliaments. Resolution on combating anti-Semitism. Not the first one, as some people mentioned. And even some say, said, why another resolution? And they have a point. If it's just another resolution, then why have it? But I hope there is a chance. I still hope there is a chance of doing something and not just adopting a resolution. But there are certain conditions to that. And calling a spade a spade is one of the conditions. We managed, at least on this continent, to reach the situation where a mainstream politician, a mainstream journalist, a mainstream professor can't be openly anti-Semitic can't deliver speeches about filthy Jews or Jewish power or things of that kind. This is definitely different from what happened in the 30s. This is a different situation. Having said that, do we always notice new anti-Semitism? Don't we so easily give in to this idea that you shouldn't say bad things about Jews? Holocaust happened. About Israelis, that's different. No, don't misunderstand me. I'm not in the business of calling an anti-Semite everyone who criticizes this or that Israeli policy or this or that Israeli government. Don't misunderstand me for a second. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about journalists and elected officials seriously asking whether IDF forces, when they are in Haiti, are not there to harvest organs. Because this idea that IDF forces are there to help after the terrible disaster in Haiti is something that you have to deal with. How come? Probably they're there to harvest organs. I'm talking about the reality where elected officials and journalists and public figures seriously say that probably the world and the Middle East would be better without the state of Israel. Now, you don't have to love Israel. I'm not here to beg for love. How come these things are not being said about any other country in the world? How come that the idea of having a nationalist state is not exactly appropriate in the 21st century? And this is a serious statement coming from many in this world. Now, there is an issue of geography, too. We are so, well, it was raised during the panels, we are so forgiving to certain regions. Yesterday we discussed whether this idea of combating anti-Semitism should be defined as in Europe, or even today during the adoption of the resolution, or should we talk worldwide? During the last soccer cup, a Lebanese minister, former Lebanese minister, was interviewed on the Lebanese TV. He was asked nonchalantly whether that night he would support the Brazilian team or the German team. And he very nonchalantly, with a nice smile, said, I don't know, I'm really torn from inside. I love how the Brazilians are playing soccer, but the Germans killed so many Jews, probably I should support them. Did you hear about that? Any of the foreign ministers, please don't jump, called the Lebanese ambassador to the foreign ministry and said that things like that are not acceptable in the modern world. No, it's not happening in Europe, it's over there. What can you expect, they say to us. Well, these countries are not really democracies. What can you expect? Borders are very easy to cross in the modern world. These ideas will infiltrate Toulouse and Paris and Belgium and all over. There are no hermetic borders in the, world, in the modern world anymore. So please, let's not think that it's not happening on our shift here in my country and it won't come to me. It will if we don't put in place all those who allow themselves statements of that kind 70 years after the Holocaust. The role of parliaments here and apropos the discussion we had about just legislating or creating the public atmosphere is great in both, 
both ways. I, by the way, don't see that there is any serious contradiction in this discussion. There are those who understand only legislation and even probably trial and imprisonment. But the public atmosphere is also very important because, thank God, the majority of people in any country are not like that. And parliaments both legislate, it's obvious, it's motherhood and apple pie, but they also create public atmosphere. And speakers are here. And I always say, at least in my parliament, in the Knesset, that we should treat ourselves seriously. And when we say something, when we take the floor, it could be, shall I say, misunderstood by some person in the street and not be taken as a parliamentarian legitimate democratic criticism, but rather a call for action, a violent action. And this is about creating the public atmosphere in our countries. By the way, many parliaments, including parliaments represented here, well, shall I say, never had any discussion about anti-Semitism, or shall I say, for many years didn't have a discussion on the floor about the state of anti-Semitism. And I'm still optimistic, because the turnout is great here, and because people stay on the right message when they speak mostly, and they address the real issue, issues, and when I started speaking, I said they confront even the issues concerning themselves. And I'll conclude with a story that we usually tell about that rabbi who was very annoying. Kids didn't like him because he knew everything. That's terrible. And one of the kids decided that he knows how to prove that this rabbi doesn't know everything. The kid caught a butterfly and brought it to the rabbi and said, what do I have in my hand? Well, the rabbi definitely didn't have any problem with saying, you have a butterfly, my son. And then came the real question. The well-prepared question that kid said to the rabbi, yeah, but is it alive or dead? The rabbi looked him in the eyes and said, it's all in your hand, my son. It's all in your hand. I still believe it's in our hands. Not forever, but it's still in our hands. Thank you.